the chair side zirconia that uh, is being launched, when you're a Ceric user, you're milling it in our MCXL. This is what we call our dry mill. And we'll talk about the ability to mill dry versus wet and what that means for everybody. So we have our milling unit. We have that little, looks like an iPad screen. And then we have our, our little oven on the side, the speed fire. These three are connected together. So when we mill our restoration, the information on that restoration is actually transferred to the speed fire electronically so we don't have to program anything. So when the, when the machine is finished imaging or finished milling and we open up the hood after it transfers properly, the patient's information and the material you're going to be using will be on that iPad there. And you'll be able to see exactly making sure you'll know the time that you're going to mill. And all you have to do is hit a little arrow. The machine, the, the, the oven will sort of drop down. You'll place your zirconia restoration on top of it. You'll put it a occlusal side down. And then you'll basically hit the arrow to start. And 22 minutes later, you'll have a, a really beautiful looking crown. So let's talk a little bit about when we are doing chair side zirconia, what some of the options are. So we have the ability to dry mill, we have the ability to wet mill, and then we have the ability to grind zirconia. So let's talk about what the difference is. So the dry mill does not use any water. So when we choose the dry milling uh, aspect, and we do that by the, the there's certain burrs that we, we dry mill with, um, it will go ahead and we'll, we'll, we'll dry mill the restoration and it will allow the machine, because we're not getting any water absorbed into that pre-sintered zirconia, it will sinter about 10 minutes faster. So I have a dry mill in my practice. This is a very similar photo of the one that I have in my practice. And I love having my dry mill because it does speed up the restoration. And if you're doing you know, two or three zirconia crowns in a day, that adds 30 minutes of time to my day to be doing something else on, a pa on another patient or this patient. So, so I really, I, I like to try to save time where I can. So I, I, I really love having that dry mill. The wet milling that we have uses water. So it goes through a 10 minute drying cycle before it gets pushed up into the, uh, when it, while it gets pushed up into the, into the hood here. So, and people will ask, well, why can this oven sinter so quickly compared to what the laboratories have? And what you'll notice is how small this oven is. It's very similar to sort of a convection oven where you can basically fit as many as, as the, the maximum, about three restorations in here. So when you place the restorations in there, there's such a small amount of area where that heat is going that we're able to center these things a, little, a lot quicker than what can be done in the bigger units that are uh, lab-based. So in this case, we're talking about when we wet mill this, we'll let that dry, we'll dry out that, that wet uh, pre-sintered zirconia, and then it will run through the cycle. So if we're at 22 minutes for the 3M in a dry mill, we're probably looking at about an extra 10 minutes if we, uh, we need to wet mill it. Why would you wet mill? Some milling units are a little bit older and they could be converted into being able to mill zirconia. And so when we, uh, but they did not have the ability to, to dry mill them. They still had only the, the ability to do wet because it was an original, uh, original milling unit. Grinding is where we don't use carbides at all. We use carbides to mill. Grinding, we use diamond burrs. So that's, what, that's gonna be the difference. You'll get a lot nicer anatomy by doing the wet milling versus doing the grinding option. So I've gotten questions in the past about what happens when you wet mill a zirconia. And when you're wet milling a, zir a zirconia on our, on our speed fire ovens, we have a self-contained tank that kind of recirculates the, the water that goes in and, uh, and, and cools down the burrs and rinses off all of the ceramics that we're milling. So what I find is that if you're not changing your tank and if your water tank gets contaminated with water that has a silica-based ceramic in it, the translucency of the zirconia that we're using, this translucent zirconia that, that uh, we're using uh, with 3M, it's going to look a lot more opaque. 
So uh, I'm going to strongly recommend using an additional tank just for zirconia. So when you're milling zirconia, it's just the zirconia dust that's in there and it's not any of that silica-based dust. And you can see here at the bottom, this is courtesy of, uh, of Mike Scramstead, showing what happens when you dry mill one when you wet mill one in the center with a clean water tank, and then what happens to the to the opacity when you use some of that uh, water with the silica remnants in it. So I would strongly recommend ordering your second tank and just having that one labeled for zirconia and only using that. It will it will save you a lot of of aggravation when you're trying to get these nice shade matches and and the and the opacity issue happens to you. So we had some early zirconias and you can see what happens when you're seeing like the early zirconias out there and they can get a little bit uh, a little bit opaque some of the some of the original zirconia. So you know, I heard people using the phrase, uh, oh, it's like uh, white gold was something we would tell our patients. We want a strong restoration. This is kind of white gold. But, you know, if you got it in an area where a patient smiled and they were these opaque type of a crowns, like something like that or, or a crown like this one, they really stood out and didn't blend in very well when we were uh, trying to make, you know, some aesthetic options for our patients. So... We used an option that where if we were going to use gold, that certainly would stick out. So we had something that was, you know, tooth colored, but just a more opaque than some of us wanted. So, so then we will we'll talk a little bit about um, as we're getting ready to start doing these. When you're trying to figure out what type of burrs you want to use, Sorona puts out to, together a really nice chart that will tell you when you're milling certain burrs. It labels the, the diamond burrs one through three, and the uh, zirconia, uh, the carbide burrs are labeled uh, four, five, and six, I believe. It's, you'll be able to see this when you take a look and look up close. And every material that we mill will have the burr combination on here. So if you're confused at which burrs to use, they'll make it really easy for you to let you know while you're milling if you want to um, uh, use a diamond burr, if you want to use your, um, your carbide burrs. When we're getting ready to mill these restorations, we have to enter a barcode. So you'll be able to see here on the, this is a single unit block that we have here. And on the single unit block, we have a barcode or some numbers. So uh, there is a scanner that some of the milling units have that you can actually just scan uh, the barcode and it will automatically enter that for you. We also have these numbers. So you can enter the numbers uh, from your keypad Onto the, onto the milling unit here. So you can see on the milling unit, we at that little box there, we entered in the acquisition, the, the, the barcode there. Or on your milling unit itself, this is my, uh, my MCXL, my dry mill. It actually has the same keypad, the same numbers up there. And you can just, you can hit start from your operatory, walk into the back and you can just place in the numbers chair side or mill side and just hit that little green check mark and you're ready to go. Now, a little tip for everybody. If you're going to do zirconia and we're trying to do these restorations in a timely fashion, so we're always looking to figure out a way to cut back time. One of the things you'll find if you regular mill these restorations, they regular mill in about 16 or so minutes, 18 minutes, somewhere around there. If you fast mill them, they're gonna tell you it's gonna take 16 minutes, but it'll take an, a, about 10 minutes. And I'll, and I'll show you that in a quick little video here in a second. But what I want you to realize is you can't automatically just fast mill these restorations. You need to have the proper, uh, a proper setting in your, in your CEREC parameters in order to allow the material to be fast milled. So, if you take a look in, we have these, this screen for our zirconia, uh, for our parameters, and you'll notice here at the bottom where it says margin thickness, you need to make your margin thickness 100 microns. That's imperative if you want to be able to fast mill these. So, and the reason I tell everyone to just set your parameter at this is if you have it at a, at a parameter, say like 70, and you decide you wanna fast mill and you go back and change the parameter, all of the work that you did on your restoration will be just restarted. It reproposes the crown. So we don't want to see all the hard work we did making that crown look really nice, change the margin thickness 
and then next thing we know, we have to cry a little bit because we're watching that thing be reproposed and now we're spending an extra few minutes trying to redesign that. So I just tell everybody, set your parameters just in general to 100 microns on margin thickness and you'll never have to worry about uh, fast milling. You'll always have that option. So we'll put the zirconia block into the milling unit and you can see this is a four motor mill in the Ceric MCXL. So with the four motor mill, you'll notice there's, there's carbide burrs and there's diamond burrs. So depending on what we told the machine to do, if we chose milling, then it will use the carbide burrs. If we chose grinding, then it would choose the diamond burrs. In this case, we chose, um, we chose milling. And you'll see here, I just took a quick video uh, to show the, the machine now is putting the block in the back and it wants to make sure that we're, we have put the block in properly and seated it all the way. So you'll see these, these the burrs, they'll touch to make sure that we have it in the proper position, that uh, again, it's seated all the way down and it's measuring the block to confirm all of those seating positions uh, within the mill chamber here. So it'll go back around. And this process, I would say, takes in the realm of, you know, a minute to a minute and 30 seconds of time. So, and then once it goes, the, the timer gets started. And you'll see, and I took a little video here because you can see on my unit here that the actual time is about 16 minutes where it gives me my actual time. So what I did was I had my watch on me and I just clicked the stopwatch function on my watch. And so you'll see here in a second, I'm gonna pop up my watch and I'm about four seconds in and we're about 15 minutes and 45 seconds. And I am going to follow the mill and see when I finish, when the machine tells me I milled for 16 minutes, was it actually 16 minutes? The times aren't always true and it's to our benefit actually. And you'll see that here in a second. So here we're getting towards the, I'll, I'll kind of show you the milling process a little bit when you dry mill. You can see here that we have our, uh, the, we have the thicker burr that is basically doing all of the gross reduction on the mill here. So as we're looking at the mill, the, uh, the diamond burr or the, um, not the diamond burr, I'm sorry, the, um, carbide burr is just doing a lot of this gross reduction and it, it goes really fast. For those of you that have not worked with zirconia before, it kind of looks like chalk once it starts being uh, uh, milled or ground. So you'll see here, we'll finish, the, that, that burr will continue to do the gross anatomy here. So that big wide burr does a lot of the, the heavy lifting here. So it's gonna go ahead and start milling in all of the, the anatomy that we have uh, chosen or designed for this restoration. And then it flips around at some point in time in the milling process and it will use the thin burr and the thin burr starts doing all that fine anatomy that we talked about. So when we place these in, the, the, the anatomy on these zirconia restorations looks so nice because it, it, that, that tip on there is so thin that we can get this really pretty enhanced anatomy for us. So here you can see, I'll take a little video of the actual time. So we have about 19 or 18 seconds left. And you'll see here, I was having a little struggle trying to get my watch to be able to be seen. So I have to turn it on and pull my sleeve up a little bit here. But you'll see, I'm at 10 minutes and eight seconds when the machine's gone for 16 already. So, so you're looking at about 10 minutes to 10 minutes and 30 seconds of actual time. So that's pretty quick when we're fast milling a zirconia to be able to get a final restoration. And you'll see here, it says forwarding restoration to Ceric speed fire. So right now in this case, you would notice that you don't wanna pick up, you never wanna open the lid. This is a really important tip here. Never open the lid of your, of your milling unit until the machine tells you that the job has been completed and it takes probably about 15 seconds from this point. It will bring over all the information to the speed fire and you'll see the speed fire will come up again with the patient's name, the material that we're using and the firing time generally is what, what pops up. So once it gets to that, you can open up the rest, the hood of the milling unit and you can unscrew it and it's ready to go. So that's the nice thing about having it interconnected is that we, it controls all of the firing. We don't have to pick programs. It does all of the work for us. 
So you'll see here I'm about, I have one of these long screwdrivers and we'll, we'll remove the restoration. Now you'll notice in this case, the restoration has not been dropped onto the pad similar to the way it's done when we're using ceramics. So here's the restoration. It's still attached to the block. And the reason being is, I told you that material is like chalk. It's very, very brittle. So with it being so brittle, from the distance that it would fall from the block to the pad that you see there on the bottom, most likely the restoration would fracture. That's how soft this material can be when not handled properly. So unlike our ceramic blocks, which in our hybrid blocks, which fall to the ground, no problem, or fall to the bottom of the milling unit, this case, we don't have to, um, we have to actually remove the sprue ourselves. 